Untold thousands of Oklahomans go to sleep every night with a serious disorder without even knowing it. Obstructive sleep apnea keeps them from getting a good night's sleep. Left untreated, it can even be fatal. That's why physicians are working to educate the public about the dangers of sleep apnea and encouraging them to seek treatment. So it's not like it's hitting the maximum or hitting the minimum. You're like, I think we're right in that sweet spot, right where we want it to be. So it must be because I'm sleeping better than ever. Good, good. Charles Roach knows what it's like to be desperate for sleep. Roach began to feel extremely tired last year, but didn't know why. I would wake up or get up in the morning and uh, be just tired and no energy. Um, just felt like I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even walk out to the mailbox without really being exerted. It turns out Roach was suffering from obstructive sleep apnea, which was keeping him from getting a good night's sleep. Dr. Vicus Jane is a sleep medicine specialist at Integris Baptist Medical Center in Oklahoma City. Jane says sleep apnea occurs when the muscles in the back of the throat relax, closing off the windpipe and stopping a person's breathing for anywhere from a few seconds to more than a minute. When that happens, you don't get as much airflow, your oxygen level may drop, and your body has to send a signal to your brain to please you know, wake up the windpipe, open it up so we can breathe properly. It's a pattern that is often repeated through the night robbing the person of the deep restorative sleep he or she needs to feel rested. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates as many as 50 million Americans suffer from some type of sleep disorder. Many of them, like Roach, don't even know they have it. My wife would tell me, you know, that you, you stop breathing during the night, and she said uh, she could count to 20, and I would stop breathing, count to 20 and then I would wake up. Roach says he didn't come fully awake, but instead drifted back into a restless sleep. The result was what he called a nightmare that went on for months. It's just terrible. You know, you don't know what's going on and you feel like you're just spiraling down and uh, uh, you just can't figure out what's happening to you. And you actually, I actually felt like I was dying a little bit every day. Diagnosing sleep apnea usually starts with a patient complaining about being constantly tired. Excessive snoring is another sign. Snoring may seem like a nuisance, but shouldn't be ignored. Vicki Joyce is a nurse practitioner at the Oklahoma Sleep Institute. Snoring is never benign. It should be investigated. So it's one of the symptoms that we look for. The next step is to bring the patient into a sleep lab like this one to see what's happening during sleep. We're looking to see if they get into all stages of sleep and there are four to five repetitive sleep cycles per night. Um, they do vary and it does depend on the patient's age. We know that patients um, spend less time in the deeper stages of restorative sleep once, once they get older. The lab also monitors patients' blood oxygen levels, heart rates, and other physiological changes. The testing isn't cheap. Spending just one night in a sleep lab can run up to $2,000, although the cost is usually covered by insurance. Sleep testing has become big business in recent years. A report from the Office of the Inspector General shows Medicare payments for sleep testing have skyrocketed from $62 million in 2001 to $235 million in 2009. That's why many insurance companies have begun requesting home sleep studies. Those studies are about one-fifth the cost of a sleep lab, but Jane says they also have their limitations. Even these home sleep studies have many different sensors that need to be hooked up, so some individual, sometimes these sensors can come off when you're sleeping, and if you're not aware of it, basically uh, the study can be inconclusive. There is no cure for sleep apnea, but it can be treated. A continuous positive airway pressure, or CPAP device, is the preferred form of treatment. Michael Shelton suffers from sleep apnea. He also helps patients at the Oklahoma Sleep Institute get fitted for the device. There are three basic forms of CPAP, ranging from a full mask to the nasal pillows that Shelton uses. And that just fits in that your nostrils, and you can still wear glasses with it. And then it has the Velcro straps, you can easily adjust it. And then again on top, 
and then to put it on, you just, and it just fits just like that. The machines can be equipped with a humidifier to prevent drying out nasal passages. Other improvements in recent years include a smart card, which helps doctors keep track of things like oxygen levels, air leakage from the devices, or other problems. The cost of the CPAP can range from a few hundred to more than a thousand dollars, but again, insurance will usually cover most of that. The cost of doing nothing can be much greater. Studies of linked sleep apnea with a host of health problems, including high blood pressure, diabetes, and stroke. The most severe cases of the disorder can even lead to sudden death for people with advanced heart disease, making it vitally important for those with sleep apnea to seek out treatment and get the sleep they need.